So on this episode of How to Build a Drift Car, we're actually going to be working on my buddy Cameron's car. We also did the other videos on how to build a bash bar, front and rear, it's same video and same uh, same vehicle actually, sorry, same vehicle. And so today, how to install a drive shaft hoop and why they're so important. So what happens is if something locks up or you, you know, somehow break the drive shaft, which is not that common in drifting, but very possible. Let's say you dump the clutch with the e-brake on or something silly like that. You can definitely break a drive shaft. Or let's say it gets damaged and it starts to wobble and then fling apart. Or the U-joint comes apart. All those concepts, it can definitely break and come apart on you. But what happens is that uh, if you run a drive shaft hoop, you run it about six inches back from the front carrier. And what will, the goal is is to prevent that drive shaft from coming through the bottom of the car up into the inside of the vehicle. And the other reason why we do it is a lot of the new series, like uh, the Drift League, recommend it and actually now make it a requirement for 2019 that you run a drive shaft hoop. They're just following in line with Formula Drift. They also require it as well. So we get a lot of these in that uh, good drift cars, ready rock and roll, but they might fail tech because they don't have a drive shaft hoop. So we'll show you today how to install a drive shaft hoop, why it's important to install one. Uh, we're gonna be using a part from Summit. It's a basic drive shaft hoop. They're about 27 bucks. And we're gonna cut it down, modify it, and make it fit in this vehicle. Cause I think they're originally designed for like an old school truck or something. So that's what we have planned for you. Stay tuned, hope you enjoy the video, and check it out. Okay, so this is the kit that we ordered from Summit Racing to do the drive shaft hoops. Comes in a simple box like this, open it up. It has two hoops and two L's. It comes with a bunch of hardware as well. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this up underneath and see how it fits. They've never fit properly the first time you always have to cut them modify them adjust them stuff like that so we're going to put it up underneath see what we need to cut first and see where it needs to go also we have to be about six inches back from the main carrier so we normally take a paint pen paint mark it and i'll show you how we do that okay so now we're underneath the car this is a nissan 240 s13 with an ls swap in it running a t56 transmission and about six inches back ten, happens to be this washer that they uh, welded on to balance the drive shaft. So that's really easy. There's no need to make a mark on it. It literally needs to be in between this and that. So that's pretty simple. The problem that we run into, which I'm sure you can see, is this ledge over here is much lower than this ledge way up here. It's about, a, say, about a four inch difference. So that means we're going to have to cut and modify this side to come up high enough so that the hoop can go around on both sides. Also, the other problem we run into is whoever did the exhaust tucked it up really, really nice, really high and flat. If you notice, there's no marks on it. The problem with that, though, is now we have to try and get the hoop to go up, around, over this thing, and back up in here, and still be able to access it, get it in and out, be able to pull the drive shaft in and out, and get the exhaust out without hitting anything. So let's see what we can do. Let's see where, what we can mock up, figure it out, and I'll show you as we start to, to notch it and cut it. So this side seems like it'll work. If you notice, this L is up there. I can get the bolts in it, in and out of it, no problem. This side, however, I was not able to get the plate in at all. So we're gonna take the, the marks that I put on this side and we're gonna actually cut this, open the bend up, and then cut the other side and bend it up more. So now instead of having a straight L or 90 degrees, it'll have two 45s to make it bend up and around this corner right here. So this is the mark. And if you notice, it's about, uh, about an inch and a half from the actual 90 degree we had. So I cut a slot in it so you can bend it because this is a quarter inch thick plate, extremely, extremely strong, very hard for us to bend. So we cut a slot in it, then I hit it with a hammer, bent it down. So this is about 45, I need to add a little bit more angle to this. And then we're gonna cut the same slot right here, a relief slot, and bend this up. So then we'll have a total radius of 90 degrees by having it by, with two 45s. Okay, so if you look 
look at it, now you can see that there's another slot right here. So we're going to bend this up while it's still hot. And we're not going to bend it by hand because I cannot bend it by hand. So we're going to hit it with a hammer, bend it back up, then I'll show you what it looks like after we're done. Okay, so if you look at it now, it still makes a 90 degree bend, but it's not all of its bend right here. There's another bend here. So we're going to bend this a little bit more because we need more of an angle and cut a little bit more out of this because we max this out to al allow us to open this up a little bit more. So this needs to come this way and this bend needs to come this way a little bit more. So the reason why we keep cutting this is to remove metal to allow this to collapse and be pushed up. So if you notice, see now I can bend it by my hand. After we're finished and we find the right angle of everything, we're actually going to clean this up and then weld it so it's solid one piece again. So this uh, looks to be about the right angle. So we're going to slide it up underneath and see how it works. Okay, so now we see it actually does fit. Because what was happening before is this 90 degree angle was hitting this and wasn't allowing it to go up. So with this angle and this bend, it allows us to slide this right up on in there. And it touches the, the hook on the other side or the U on the other side. So let's uh, we're going to drill some holes back here so that we can actually mount it to the chassis now. And then we'll see where the top hoop needs to go. So. Now we fold it back out, and because it's weak here, we're gonna weld this and weld this to make it strong again, give it the strength it needs to be to hold the drive shaft in, in case the drive shaft comes out on you, which is not fun. There we go. So the first one's welded and done, and now we're going to weld the second one and just make sure that it's still at a 90 degree angle. So it did move a little bit on us when we were welding. There we go, we're back to 90, so we're gonna, now we're going to weld this side. There we go. So now you have both sides welded. And if you did it right, you have penetration all the way through on both sides. I tend to pulse weld because I can control the heat really well. But there we go. Solid. We're going to let it cool down and we will paint it. But now we got to check the other side. Okay. So this seems to fit up there quite nice. There's just enough room to get the drive shaft on and off. And there's a little bit of room over here. Whew, it's hot still. And what we're going to do now is take our paint pen and mark where we need the two holes to go through the body. So we're gonna go through right about here and from the top side that looks like it's right underneath the seat so we shouldn't have any problems with hitting anything. So now let's drill our two holes, put nut and bolts in and then we'll go to the other side. So now we will drill the holes. And on this one I drilled the holes a little bit bigger than the actual bolt size so we have a little play going right to left uh, so that we can adjust it and tighten it all up together. Okay, so we put the bolts in. We chose to go this way so that the top would just hold the, the nuts automatically and we could just tighten them up. So we tighten these up. Now this is in. And then we have our upper hoop that I just bolted in from this one side. So this side has two bolts here and then a mount here. The problem we're running into is there's not enough room to come down across and back up to that other hoop from this location. There's just no way that there's enough room. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to kind of improvise. We're going to take this guy, which fits over here quite nice, just like it's supposed to. There we go, just like it's supposed to right here. But instead of having it loop down, we're going to build a brace off of this one that goes straight across and connects to the other side. So it's going to be flat. So it'll be kind of like a uh, It'll be, U, uh, it'll be a U at the top and then straight across at the bottom. So let's see how we're going to make that. Okay, so what we figured out is that this is now on the driver's side and the upper hoop bolts on right here, which doesn't leave us another set of bolt holes to bolt on the bottom lower part. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark this so we know exactly where it needs to mount on here. So drill these two holes on this side. And then I'll show you what we're going to do with this piece afterwards because we now need to make this piece flat straight across. So what we did is we put this on this way first, like that, and then I marked it 
to make sure that there was enough clearance between here and the, the new plate that goes on the bottom. Then I took this guy, put it on like that, poked the two holes in it and just made sure it was off that line so there was enough gap between this one and the upper one that we're going to do. Now we're going to put this in the drill press and drill two holes in this. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we need this technically to be straight across from one side to the other because there's no room to have this big hoop underneath. So, what we did is we took the same plate and I actually happen to have the, the right material. What we're going to do is we're going to line it up on the end there and on the end here and we're going to weld this so this plate is going to be welded to the bottom like so. So it's going to be all one piece. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut right above the eyelids on this side, right up above the eyelids on this side. The reason why we're going to leave it together while we weld it on here is so we don't have to guess how wide it is. We already know this is a pre-made piece from Summit, so we know that this is the, the right width. So we're going to weld it to the plate, weld it to the plate, cut off the excess plate here, chop it here, chop it here, and then you'll see what we have left over, and it should slide right up underneath the exhaust. Okay, so now I've welded this side, if you look, welded it through there, welded it all through here, this side and here, and this side out here. So now it's all welded, now you have kind of this weird looking like little D-shaped thing. So we're gonna cut this off, this outer edge off so it's nice and smooth. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these eyelets off, and now this is gonna be flipped upside down. So this bottom piece is gonna be the lower part of the brace, no longer the big hoop. So we'll cut this off and get rid of the hoop, and then we'll mount this. Okay, so if you look at it now, now we have the edge we need on one side, the flat bottom base that we needed, and this. And the other piece that we had, this guy is no longer needed. And what will happen is it will actually bolt on to the lower part where we put the marks. It will bolt on flat just like this to both sides and then go right across the middle. So let's go put it on the car, see how it fits. Okay, so now we have bolted this back in on this side. So we have, we kept this side still in. You have the top hoop up there, and then this side's bolted in. We just put this bar back in right now. It comes all the way over here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to mark this side just like we did the other side. The two holes, and then we're going to take a drill and drill right on through it. So now that we have this side mounted, we can take our little plate that we built to clear this and see how it fits. And it looks like, there we go. Right there, it looks like it fits in there pretty well. It's about an inch from this and about uh, about an inch and a half, two inches from the drive shaft itself. So we should be good, even if it flexes a little bit, it shouldn't hit anything. And we got it all tucked in nicely. We're gonna put these bolts in it and check the final fit. Okay, so I ended up pulling the exhaust down because there wasn't enough room to go in between it. And now you can see how we built this. So if you look right here, this is the 45 that we built earlier, with the two angles. And then the, the top bar is the bar that goes right here that we just built, the long flat one. Then we have the, the U that came factory from Summit all the way up top. Then we have the drop down there, and then the brace goes from here and comes straight across over there. And then we're just going to put our last two anchor bolts in there, and we're all done. Then we're going to slide the exhaust up and fire her up, and she's ready to go. Hey, so thanks for watching how to install a drive shaft hoop. It's very important that you guys have those out there. Uh, funny story real fast. Teammate Daryl Priono took his car to the dyno and on the second or third pull, uh, something happened with the transmission. It locked up, broke the drive shaft. Drive shaft came up through the center console, almost killed Eric, our tuner at West Tech, hit the roof and then land and like came back down. So. Please be careful with that. It's, it's no joke. If a drive shaft comes apart, it's super dangerous. Uh, you can buy those drive shaft hoops, kits that you saw earlier from Summit. Maybe like 27 bucks. And then just do some work, modify it, get them to fit up in there, and you'll be good to go. Oh, you safer than sorry. Uh, it's not worth it. We've already experienced it and watched it happen. So with that being said, thanks for watching it. Uh, if you have any comments or questions or any concerns, leave them down below. I'll get to them as soon as possible. Also, if you guys enjoyed it, hey, 
please press subscribe. Subscribe to this channel. We're going to produce these things. We're going to be doing a lot more of these videos. Uh, probably a couple a week is the game plan. We do a lot of work here. So thanks for watching. We really enjoy it. And hope to see you guys soon.